good day friends welcome to my channel lecture series on power electronics in this lecture we are going to see about the speed control of three phase induction motors there are two types of three phase induction motors the rotors of the two types are shown here one is a slip ring rotor the second one is a squirrel cage rotor if we see the structure the squirrel cage rotor has copper bars or aluminium bars as shown in this picture all of them connected to the end ring like this and it is a completely closed structure the slip ring induction motor has a three phase winding and it is star connected the three ends of the winding are taken out and given to the slip rings slip ring induction motor is also called as a wound rotor induction motor in both the cases the stator will be containing a three phase winding the representation of the three phase induction motors is shown here the stator is shown as star connected and the three phase supply is given usually to the stator this is a squirrel cage rotor which is a completely closed structure this is a slip ring induction motor the stator is similar to that of a squirrel cage induction motor but the rotor has a three phase winding which is usually star connected the three ends of the winding are taken out and externally shorted so this makes it possible for making any external connection to the rotor of a slip ring induction motor for the purpose of speed control whereas it is not possible with the squirrel cage induction motor speed control of induction motors can be achieved from stator side and rotor side from the stator side if the speed has to be changed there are three possible methods stator voltage control stator frequency control and by changing the number of poles from the rotor side the types are rotor resistance control and slip power recovery schemes under slip power recovery schemes there are two schemes sherbrius scheme and kramer scheme stator voltage control is a method by which the speed of a three phase induction motor can be changed in this method the supply available for the stator of the induction motor is changed a thyristor voltage controller is used for this purpose the thyristor voltage controller consists of three pairs of thyristors as shown here two thyristors are connected back to back and each pair is connected to a phase the supply voltage to the induction motor is changed by changing the firing angle of the thyristors the torque developed by the three phase induction motor is proportional to the square of the supply voltage and hence the motor speed will be getting changed when the supply voltage is changed there will not be cha any change in the synchronous speed of the motor the ns the synchronous speed remains the same but the torque developed being proportional to the square of the voltage the speed of the machine can be changed and one more important point is the speed at which the maximum torque occurs is also independent of the change in the supply voltage the points to be noted with the stator voltage control are each pair of thyristor controls the voltage of the phase to which it is connected the speed control is obtained by varying the conduction period of the thyristor for lower power ratings back to back thyristor pairs connected in each phase are replaced by a triac a triac is similar to two thyristors connected back to back this method though the cheapest and the easiest method it is rarely used because a large change in the voltage is required for a relatively small change in speed and this large change in voltage will result in a large change in flux density thereby seriously disturbing the magnetic conditions of the motor the torque speed characteristics of a three phase induction motor is shown here for stator voltage control in this case we can see that as the voltage is increased 
the torque developed by the motor is increasing say for example this is the supply voltage v is for which the torque is maximum over here and the torque speed characteristic is shown by the black line when the voltage is decreased the torque developed line is shown by the green one and it is below this black line and when the voltage is further decreased it is shown by the blue line but the speed at which the maximum torque occurs is almost more or less the same so the change in the supply voltage does not affect the point at which the maximum torque occurs the second method available for speed control of induction motors from the stator side is stator frequency control we know that the synchronous speed of the rotating magnetic field produced by the stator ns is given by 120 f by p where f is the frequency p is the number of poles so if the frequency is changed the synchronous speed can be changed when the synchronous speed of the motor is changed the motor speed that is the rotor speed can be changed this is accomplished by a circuit like this the three phase supply at any frequency is fed to a three phase rectifier which converts this ac into a dc voltage and using an inverter this dc voltage is converted to a three phase supply at any desired frequency so the frequency is changed from f1 to f2 and that frequency that supply is fed to the induction motors so by changing the frequency the synchronous speed is changed hence the motor speed is changed this method is used to some extent on electrically driven ships the speed torque characteristics for the speed control of induction motor using stator frequency control is shown here here as the frequency is changed we can see the shift in the characteristics and here the point at which the maximum torque occurs changes as the frequency is change which is not the case with the stator voltage control the third method of speed control from the stator side of a three phase induction motor is by changing the number of poles this method is easily applicable to squirrel cage motors because squirrel cage rotor adapts itself to any reasonable number of stator poles the synchronous and hence the running speed of induction motor would also be changed by changing the number of stator poles the change of number of poles is achieved by having two or more entirely independent stator windings in the same slots each winding would give a certain number of poles and hence different synchronous speeds so motors with four different independent stator windings are also in use and they give four different synchronous speeds and hence the motor speeds of course one winding is used at a time the others being entirely disconnected this method is used for elevator motors traction motors and also for small motors driving machine tools the speed control of three phase induction motor from the rotor side is discussed here there are two methods one is rotor resistance control other one is the slip power recovery scheme this rotor side control is possible only for slip ring induction motors and it is not possible for squirrel cage induction motors this method is done by introducing an external resistance in the rotor circuit so the motor speed can be changed by increasing the rotor resistance one serious disadvantage of this method is that with the increase in the rotor resistance the i square r losses also increase which decreases the operating efficiency of the motor the losses is directly proportional to the reduction in speed the second disadvantage is that the double dependence of speed the speed does not depend only on rotor resistance but on load as well because of the wastefulness of this method it is used where speed changes are needed for 
short periods only. The rotor resistance control can be achieved in the conventional way as well as in the static way. The conventional rotor resistance control is shown here. The stator is shown here. Rotor is shown here. The slip rings are shown here. And the slip rings are externally connected to rheostats, which is also shown here. By adjusting the resistance of this variable rheostat, the uh, net rotor resistance is increased. Thereby, the speed of the motor is changed. This is a conventional rotor resistance method in which rheostats are used for increasing the resistance of the rotor. Static rotor resistance control method is explained here. The three-phase rheostat which was used in the conventional method here is replaced by a three-phase diode rectifier and a DC chopper as shown here. The inductance LD acts as a current source and the DC chopper varies the effective resistance. The value of resistance here is R and it can be changed. The effective value of this resistance can be changed by operating this chopper which is here a GTO gate turn off thyristor. So when the switch is on it is the resistance is not included in the circuit and when the switch is off, a value of resistance is included. The duty cycle of the chopper is given by K which is the total on time of the resistor divided by the total time of operation that is T on by T on plus T off. The effective resistance here is given by R into 1 minus K where K is the duty cycle of the chopper. The speed can be controlled by varying the duty cycle K or in other words by changing the on time of this chopper the effective resistance can be changed and hence the uh, when the resistance is changed the speed of the machine is also changed. The second method of speed control from the rotor side of a three-phase induction motor is the slip power recovery scheme. This scheme is applicable only to slip ring induction motors. There are two schemes available, Sherbier scheme and Kramer scheme. Under the Sherbier scheme, there are two other methods available, conventional Sherbier system and the static Sherbius system. In the conventional Sherbius system, the recovery scheme is done by the feedback path. The output of the three phase induction motor is given to a rotary converter which converts the AC voltage available at the slip rings to a DC voltage and it is given to a DC motor. This DC motor is mechanically coupled with the induction generator which generates an AC voltage and the power is given back to the supply mains. The static Sherbier system provides speed control of slip ring induction motor below synchronous speed. A portion of the rotor AC power is converted into DC by the diode bridge. An inverter converts the AC back to DC and feeds it back to the source. Power feedback can be controlled by controlling the inverter firing angle. The inductor LD provided here is used for reducing the ripple in the DC link current. Since slip power is fed back to the source, the, di the drive has high efficiency compared to rotor resistance control method or AC voltage controllers method. The next method of slip power recovery scheme is the static Kramer scheme. In this method, the rotary slip power is converted into DC by a diode bridge. The DC power is fed to a DC motor which is mechanically coupled with the induction motor. The speed control is done by varying the field current of the DC motor. For large speed applications, the diode bridge is replaced by 
thyristor bridge and the speed can be controlled by varying the firing angle of the bridge and the speed in that case can be controlled up to the standstill condition in this lecture the speed control of induction motors from the stator side by three methods stator voltage control stator frequency control by changing the number of poles and the rotor side speed control by rotor resistance control slip recovery recovery schemes that is sharpius and kramer scheme has been discussed hope this clarifies the speed control of induction motors from stator as well as the rotor side thank you